Now before insertion, let's look at a few key points. We always want to remember to perform our hand hygiene, provide privacy for a patient. So I will tell you, this is not the most pleasant procedure when you insert a nasogastric tube. So you want to make sure you provide the patient as much privacy and comfort as possible. And really be thorough about explaining the procedure to the patient. As a nurse, be honest. Let them know, hey, this is going to be uncomfortable and this is what's going to happen. Now next, we want to raise the bed to the appropriate position. We also want to make sure we help the client to an upright position, so about at least 45 to 90 degrees. Now the higher the bed, the easier the insertion is going to be. Also get a baseline idea of what the patient's GI status is going to be and how they feel before you insert the NG tube. What you're going to need is your nasogastric tube, and so you're going to have to choose here depending on the need for your patient. So here we have a Salem sump, for example. You're going to need an absorbent pad or maybe a towel, and also a securement device. Now it's really important that any time that you put something into a patient, like insertion of a Foley catheter or like a nasogastric tube we're doing here, you want to use a water-soluble or lubricating jelly for comfort for your patient. We want a clean piston syringe, and we're also going to need a cup of water if it's not contraindicated for a patient. So this is important because we're going to help use this to help the patient swallow for advancing of the tube. So before we get started, we want to perform our hand hygiene and put on our gloves. Now next, it's really important to assess the client's nasal cavity. Now this is important because maybe your patient has some facial trauma or maybe they have a deviated septum. So we want to look at each nair and to see which one is best to attempt to insert our NG tube. Now we've got to determine the insertion length of the NG tube. You're going to take the tip of that nasogastric tube, put it to the tip of your patient's nose, then you're going to stretch it across to their earlobe and then all the way down to their xiphoid process. Now just for safety, I usually go a few centimeters past that xiphoid process. It's really better to go a little long than to be short. Now after we've done this, we can drape an absorbent pad or maybe a towel over the client's chest. Then we want to make sure we lubricate the tip of the nasogastric tube. This is going to be really key to help with insertion and make it much more smooth and comfortable for your patient. So once we've lubricated the tip of our nasogastric tube, have the client position their head straight forward. So then we want to take the distal tip of that nasogastric tube and insert it into their nostril. Now once that's occurred, you want to teach your patient to position their chin to their chest like so. So this is really going to help advance that tube past the back of the mouth into the throat and not into the trachea. Now once we reach to the back of the mouth, we can then have the client swallow through air or take a drink of water and help swallow to facilitate the movement of that tube further down the esophagus. Now this is really key here. If the patient begins coughing or if the tube coils in the back of the throat, we need to stop the procedure. Now here I like to take a pen light, for example, and look in the back of a patient's throat, making sure that if it coils or if I catch that early, I can stop the procedure for the patient. Now, if it goes smoothly and there's no coughing or no gagging, we can continue to advance that nasogastric tube to the predetermined length. Now, one thing to know when advancing, if you go really slow, it's just really dragging on the procedure. So if that nasogastric tube is going down, go quickly and keep going advancing the tube. Now, once that's done, you can secure the tube using a securement device of whatever your agency has to the correct insertion length. So once we've secured the tube, we want to confirm the tube placement by aspirating gastric contents with our piston syringe. Next, we need to obtain an order for an x-ray to verify the exact placement and positioning of our nasogastric tube. I'm going to show you how to insert a nasogastric tube. So before we get started, I'm going to perform my hand hygiene. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and put on my gloves. So one thing to note about nasogastric tube insertion. 
Because we're through the GI tract, this is not a sterile procedure. I know you may see some things that are in a package, but just again note, the GI tract is not a sterile environment. So this is helpful for you to know as a student. And at this point, I've already explained the procedure to my patient. I also let them know that when you insert a nasogastric tube, it is not the most comfortable procedure. So be really honest about this when you're approaching your client about it. All right, so next let's go ahead and assess the client's nasal cavity. So when I do this, I'm gonna look at each nerve or patient. You can even take your pen light, for example, take a look up there, ask the patient if they have a deviated septum or any issue on one side or the other. The other thing you can do is have the patient close one nostril and blow and see which one has a stronger airflow, for example. So once we've assessed the patient's nasal cavity, I'm going to determine the insertion length of our nasogastric tube. All right, so let's take a look at equipment that we've got here. I've got a little tape for marker here. I've got our lubricant. I've got our piston syringe. I've also got a nasogastric securement strip, our nasogastric tube, and I'm using the Salem slump today. Also, my pen light for zip visualization, and sometimes if you need to look inside the patient's mouth, it's handy to have maybe like a tongue depressor so you can push down their tongue and take a look inside their mouth. So if you have some help, anytime you place a nasogastric tube, it's always great to have a second set of hands. Okay, let's take out our nasogastric tube. So I want to show you a few things before we get started. So you're going to see this tip of the nasogastric tube. So this is our distal tip. The other thing I want to show you is here is that air vent port that we talked about earlier. Now this piece here has our little bit adapter. And this is here to put suction down, for example, or hook to suctioning. We also can put our piston syringe here for feedings, medication delivery, for example. When we're using a Salem sump tube, the smaller blue lumen serves as the air vent. We also call this an air vent or the pigtail. The air port allows for an inflow of atmospheric air, which prevents a vacuum if the NG adheres to the wall of the stomach. Now, when I said that we weren't going to do anything with a smaller blue air vent, what I mean by this is that we don't connect that air vent to suction or use it to flush liquids or put anything down that air vent. A great pro tip is that the blue pigtail or the air vent should be positioned above the level of the stomach. This is going to help to avoid backflow of stomach secretions. Now, many times we're going to use an anti-reflux valve, and this is attached to the blue pigtail to prevent gastric contents from spilling out. Okay, so, and remember, I've got clean gloves, this is open, this is not a sterile procedure. So, I've got my nasogastric tube here. Okay, so now we've taken a look at our tubing, let me show you how to measure. So I'm gonna take this distal tip here and I'm gonna take it to the tip of the patient's nose. So we're gonna take it to the tip. We're gonna take it to the side of the earlobe. And then I'm gonna take my measurement and go down and feel and palpate where his xiphoid process is. And if you want to, it's always a good idea just to go a few centimeters over. The reason why I do this, like I spoke about earlier, is that it's always better to go a little farther down because that's much less risk for aspiration. Okay, so a couple of tips once you measure the length. It's really important for you to mark this. So every nurse has a preference. You can use a black marker is a really great idea, permanent marker. That way we know exactly where the insertion piece should be. Also another little tip, if you will take a piece of tape on insertion and you wrap it around where the insertion point should go, doesn't have to be neat, then when you're inserting, you know exactly where to stop. So this is really helpful in the meantime. And obviously once you're inserting, you can take this off as well. Okay, so now that we've measured this, we're ready to go. So we've got the measuring of this. 
The other thing is I want to make sure my client is comfortable. Notice that the patient's head of bed is up at least past 45 degrees. If they can tolerate it, 90 degrees is even better. The other thing is know that there's secretions. We're going to be going down the nasal cavity. So I'm going to protect my patient as well and put absorbent sheet over him. Though if they cough or sputter or anything like that, we don't get it on their gown. Okay, so now that's set. So now I'm gonna prepare my equipment and I'm going to lubricate the tip of my nasogastric tube. So you may see a nurse lubricate, like stick the nasogast the tube down into the surgical lubricant, but I just wanna be extra nice as a nurse and make sure this is really well lubricated. This is gonna help for much more easier advancement, if you will, to the tube. And I'm just going nice down the tube and make sure that's nice and lubricated. May seem a little excessive, but it definitely helps provide comfort for your patient. Okay, and before I start that, I'm gonna go ahead and get my nose nasogastric strip ready. This is gonna help secure it when I'm ready. And once I place the nasogastric tube. Okay, and you're gonna see why that's important here in a bit. Okay, so I think we've got our lubricant, we've got that ready. Okay, so now I go ahead and insert. So again, I've explained the procedure to my patient. So when I do this, I wanna make sure my patient's head is tilted forward. It's never a bad idea to put your hand behind the patient sometimes. They're going to naturally resist you when you insert the nasogastric tube, but I don't think this guy's gonna resist me much. All right, so here's our nasogastric tube. I'm taking the tip and I'm gonna go down this nair. So once I insert and I start feeding it in, this is a good time to have the patient chin to chest. So I'm gonna move his chin to chest and then I'm gonna advance the tube. Because remember, we're trying to make sure we get down to the back of the throat. And we're gonna advance the tube. So notice I'm going in a very pretty smooth situation, right? I didn't take too slow, it advanced smoothly, so I'm gonna keep going. Now you see here why I like to mark that too, because without having to watch, I can just keep going if my patient can tolerate it. Now, here is what I like to do before I lose my tube. I wanna secure it. So this is where the nasogastric tube comes in, or the securement strip, excuse me. The little heart's gonna go around their nose. Take off the securement strip and my measuring tape. So notice the whole time I'm doing this, I've not let go of the nasogastric tube. And the reason why I don't wanna do this, I don't wanna lose placement. Okay, so now I've gotten that done. I'm gonna place this on top of my tube and I'm gonna wrap the wings around. Okay, so now this is secured. So again, this is why I like to secure my tube first because then I can check on my patient, I can make sure and look at them, make sure everything looks all right. And that way when I check for placement, I'm not having to fumble around and not lose my tube. Okay, so now that I've done this, the next thing that I can do is check for gastric contents and make sure it's in the right place. So when I do this, I'm gonna take off my filter. Now your hands may be a little slippery from the lubricant. I'm gonna insert my piston syringe and then you can pull back and when you do, if it's in the correct placement, you're gonna see gastric contents come through here. Now, one rule of thumb, anytime you remove gastric contents for an NG tube, you wanna replace those. That's your patient's normal bacteria floor and you wanna give it back to them. Okay. Okay, so that's one way to verify. Then we wanna go by our agency protocol and get a chest x-ray and make sure it's in the right place.
So one key note I want to talk about while I was advancing. Clearly this guy went pretty smooth, but as I'm advancing, if you have a helper with you, it's a great time to have your helper. As soon as I went past the nostril, I'd like to take a tongue depressor, push down the patient's tongue, and pin light in my patient's mouth. So as soon as we go past the nair and we go past the back of the throat, we can assess and make sure that tube is not coiling in the back of the patient's throat. Now, during this procedure, if my patient were to cough or to gag, I need to stop immediately, assess where maybe the tube is, and stop the procedure and maybe even pull out. So if we need to do that, that's totally fine. You just want to take a rest, make sure your patients are comfortable, and then reattempt again. Now, anytime you're inserting nasogastric tube, if you meet a lot of resistance, you want to stop, you may need to try the other nostril on the patient to see if it's a little bit smoother.